Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. I see that there's been some comments. I'm apparently not allowed to scroll down and see them all uh, for whatever reason, but I'm really excited to open this package and I'm going to. And uh, I just made a mistake here. Um, sorry everyone, I'll be back. I had, uh, I'll be right back. I have a little technical difficulty. All right, I am back. So, YouTube is playing a commercial on a live stream. That ever happened before? I'm not aware of that ever happening before, but that's just weird. Okay. So, as a courtesy, I need to cover up the addresses. That is something one does. And I did that electronically on my thumbnail. So I somehow neglected to address that issue before I started. So now, now we're okay and I can uh, take care of that. So let's see, who's in the house? We got the formal top hat, the Kaiju Isu channel, Thoropods, Dana Smith, Real Brooklyn. Awesome. Who else we got? I can't go back any further. Won't let me. All right. And Gaetan Bodine, J Man, Critters and More. Lots of people in the house. Great. This is awesome. So let's let's start, shall we? And open up this. This package was sent from Alan. Um, Alan, I'm going to hopefully say his name right, his last name. John. J John is his last name. He has a lot of experience with isopods and he wanted to conduct a trade. So um, we did a trade. I sent him some millipedes. He sent me some isopods. So there you go. Nice styro line containers there. Okay, let's see what we got first. Okay, so these, there's some, whoa, he sent me 30 Orange Vigor. He is actually one of the earliest people to work with Orange Vigor back um, to get this strain established. Mm -hmm. He collected some in his area, which I believe he's in Alabama, and I think he was at the time as well. So let's see if we can get a good look at some of these guys. Um, if not, I'll open them up over the container, but there's some of them right there. Nice color on these little ones even. So he collected the first, uh, first uh, few of them in his area, and then he sent them to um, Kyle Candillion of Roach Crossing, who had some that he had collected in his local area in Michigan, and then um, they fixed this strain. So, um, that is very cool. And I am going to add these to my Orange Vigor colonies for more blood uh, in terms of, you know, genetic diversity in that sense. Um, because I thought that would be nice. I've had these for these Orange Vigor for a long time and uh, have had some interesting things happen in the colony genetically. And uh, that's cool. But I'm, I've been isolating out what may be type of albino. They have orange heads and then the rest of the body is like lemon yellow. So I want to put, uh, that's, those are in a different bin, but I'm going to put these in here to get them going. Uh, you know, some, some genetic diversity. And there's a lot in there. And there's a really nice color on them. And I think maybe, uh, a more consistent color than I had in my uh, group. 
And I really like the orange figure. They're like an underrated isopod, really. Very cool and very, very generous culture there. So thank you, Alan, for sending those. I think I'm going to leave the paper towel in there and just kind of let them crawl off and do their thing. And that's sometimes the best way to do it. Make sure there are no stems that are going to create an exit. It's always a trash fire when that happens. So there we go. There's the orange finger. Very nice. Okay, so let's see what's next. Um, I'm going to address some questions in the chat too while we're doing this. Um, Dr. Monkey Breath. Cohabitating different species of millipede. I think in general if you're not breeding them that it's fine and if you are breeding them it's probably not the most effective way to do it but it can certainly work for many species since their needs are so similar. Mickey M's in the house. Abe C. Sell leaf insect in the U.S. I don't think anybody does it legally if they don't have permits. The permits are fairly rare. So Alex B. So formal top hat, you're going down to chocolate and what's the other millipede? Oh, um, Spirostreptus species one. Um, so the chocolate, uh, if you're talking about the Orthoporus species of chocolate millipede, I would get the um, Spirostreptus species one instead because they can be bred in captivity. And their length is probably pretty comparable, but I would also suggest uh, Ivory millipedes, they are a great one. Formal top hat. Oh, we've got a super chat. The Tarantula Collective, excellent. Oh yeah, you were doing a live unboxing too, huh? That's awesome. Well, thank you, Richard, I appreciate that. That's excellent. It is the night for live unboxings. Great minds think alike. I guess that's what's going on, right? It's, it's good to see you here in the in the chat on the live stream. That's awesome. By the way, um, I'm going to be guest podcasting on the Exotic Pet Collective, which is Richard's other channel. So that's coming up pretty soon. You should check it out. Uh, you should check it out anyway. He's got lots of cool uh, podcasts. I've been enjoying listening to them. So the Exotic Pet Collective, it can either be a YouTube video, you can watch it at, on YouTube and listen to it, or you can get it wherever you get podcasts. So. Ooh, dark fries. Death in the Armadillidium officinalis colony. I'm sorry to hear it. 70 count Oniscus Acellus, real Brooklyn. I'd probably do the 16 quart, um, 16 quart sterilite tub. And yeah, formal top hat, Spirostrepta species one. Oh yes, November 19th, that was the day. First, I get confused because that week I have like a bunch of collaborations either going on or, or being released. So I didn't want to say the wrong date. So I'm glad you, you said that. Um, so, oh. Sorry folks, my microphone just popped right off. Oh, I stepped on it. Let's open another box, shall we? Um, or not another box, let's open... Oh, he's got other containers in here, so... That's the heat pack right there. Still a little warm, which is great. He sent it express, which is nice. Always the best way to do it. Let's see what we got in here. Okay. This one is Armadillidium Montenegro, the uh, locality of Armadillidium klugai. And I have this one, but again, mine started out with a fairly small uh, gene pool. Hmm. I'm be careful when I open that. And so I wanted to make sure that I had you know, a little bit of depth of the gene pool. I've got tons of them in here. They're doing really well. But it doesn't hurt to add a little bit of, you know, genetic diversity. So that's what we're doing here. Oh yeah. And he's got lots of nice young ones. Perfect age for shipping. Oh, and there's tons of them in there too. Lots of them. Check them out. That is great. Thank you, Alan. I'll really get my population uh, even more in here. Really get my population going uh, with some new blood. 
I think, you know, inbreeding depression is not as much of an issue with inverts as it is with some other things, but it still can be an issue and might as well prevent it. Genetic diversity is nice in uh, different populations. So, you know, you want to keep that going. Okay, let's see what else is in here. I felt some other bins in here. Um, okay, checking. Let's see. Oh yeah, Wally Kern, Supreme Gecko, end of the year giveaways, definitely. The young bloods like it. So moth meats, you're working on becoming a hobbyist. That's often awesome. DEA exotics, hello. Here we go. So it looks like there are two more, two more deli cups in here. I wasn't expecting two to be honest. So let's see what's going on there. Oh, okay. 20 plus Montenegro. So these are more. Wow. I'm going to get a, a really healthy colony. Now, um, I'm probably going to split tubs. I, I think I might split tubs. Just mix them all up. Um, I can... That is so cool. Sorry. I'm trying to get the camera to the right place. But a bunch more Montenegro, which are such cool isopods. And... Now my colony is going to be even more robust. I need to adjust the camera. It's really not getting where I want to get as much as I would like it to. So that's a little better there. And did I? I didn't mean to switch to top chat. There we go. Albatross Gaming's in the house. Cool. All right. So the next container that we're going to look at here is an isopod species, or well, I'm going to say it's an isopod morph that I do not have. So I'm quite excited to have it. CS and Zero Cool in the house. Nice. Okay. Here we go. This next one. Don't have this. I don't know that there's a lot of people that do have it. It's fairly rare. I'm pretty excited to do this one. Okay. So. Let me move the box out of the way and put this bin in the way instead. Okay, so here's their new bin. This is Armadillidium nasatum whiteout. Um, Armadillidium nasatum, you may know the peaches, you may know the pearl, you may know the wild type. There's also an orange version of this uh, species, an orange morph that's um, less peach and more orange, but these are completely white, which sounds really cool. We have white out um, Porcelionides prunosus, white Porcelio scaber, but it's not a very common thing to have completely white isopods with white eyes. It is uh, fairly uncommon. So let's see if I can keep this on focus. Oh, check these out. Very cool. Now, Armadillidium nasatum is very interesting for lots of reasons. See how the, its eyes are completely white? It's hard to focus on them. But there's no dark eyes, no dark anything. Except for, you know, digestive tracts full of stuff. But that's all. And Armadillidium nasatum is, is a fairly underrated isopod. They actually have a, a maximum size that's bigger than Armadillidium vulgare. They, they don't often reach it, but they can reach a size larger. And they are much more uh, hardy in terms of uh, ventilation. They, they can handle lower ventilation much, much better than Armadillidium vulgare. And they actually are, they reproduce more frequently. So, there's a lot to be said for this species. And I am really looking forward to working with this morph that really is just being isolated. He said he had a colony with uh, hets and some whites, and he was willing to send me um, 13 whites, which is awesome. Really excited to uh, play with these guys. I think someday, a few years down the road, it would be cool to have like a gem mix of these, where you have the peaches and the oranges and the 
the pearls and the, the white outs, some wild types in there. Sounds pretty cool to me. So I'm going to pull up the chat and check it out for just a second. Um, you know, I'm not sure, Formal Top Hat, which one of those isopods is um, longer. But Mickey M actually sells Species 1, Spirostreptus Species 1 sometimes. She was in the chat here a little while ago, hopefully still is. But you can check her out um, on Arachnoboards too. And I got some Species 1 from her, so that was a place to go. Um, Okay, so there you go, formal top hat. Mickey M still has some available. Very cool. It's nice to be able to make connections like that. Hopefully that works out for both of you. Um, now, thank you again, Alan, for sending those. Alan John. And now we're going to open a bin. Wait, sorry. I want you to make sure I don't get confused about what's where. So I'm actually going to put, because I haven't done labels yet. I don't know completely what I'm getting, so I'm going to put that in there so I don't get confused. And Okay, I'm going to put this over here so I can print labels later. And put this one up here. This one is from the Isopod Farm. So you can check out the Isopod Farm on Instagram. I believe that's the main uh, main venue right now for the for the isopod farm. Main platform is um, Instagram. So let's do this. Oh, check it out. There it is indeed. Instagram, the isopod farm. So I'm just going to hold that for there for a second. So if anybody wants to go to um, this time, you know, you can pause it in the replay and you can um, get a photo of that if you want to. So you can go there. Pull tab. Nice idea. I need to start doing that. Okay. Just making sure I didn't... Uh, I've had my Spiroscriptus, the longest one I had for a long time. Um, oh, check it out. This is something I've been really excited to get. Armadillidium vulgari gem mix. For those of you who don't know, um, this morph is basically not really a morph, it's like a mix of morphs, a morph mix. Um, lots of different types. You can have Magic Potion, Orange Vigor, Punta Cana, Santa Lucia, different, you know, Sunset. It's just, it depends on what's in there. But they're, they're, all, uh, they're all mixed up, so it's like a, a bag of jelly beans. You don't know what you're going to get. And they keep producing babies of different colors, which is fantastic. I mean, I think that's part of the reason I love it so much. I've been fascinated by this idea for a long time of getting Gem Mix. And uh, Isopod Farm said, hey, I can send you some. So that was really nice of Isopod Farm to do. Um, so here we go. Let's get these open and see if we can see some of the fun variations that are in here. There's 30 of them, which is fantastic because when you start with 30, you know, you've got a a leg up, so to speak, because it's going to take a lot less time to get your colony established, but you've also got some genetic diversity from the get-go, a lot more variety in the colony. So it's kind of fun. Oh, Albatross Gaming, Beardy, that's cool, one year old. Beardies are fun, but it's not if, if you just, you've just got him and he's a year old. Okay. Um, I've only babysat Beardies a couple times. I've never actually kept one. So I don't really feel like I can give a whole lot of um, good advice, per se. Ooh, look at this. 
Let's see what we can see. A couple of fun colors already. Is that a magic potion or is that an albino? I think it might be a T minus albino. Pretty fantastic looking. Hey, theropod hunters. Should we dig through this a little bit and see what we got? This one looks like it might be a Santa Lucia or maybe a Punta Cana. This one, I think I'm, I'm not sure it might be an albino. It might be a magic potion. It's hard to see if those little, little bits of moss or those are actually, look at that color on there. That one looks like it could be a Punta Cana. Ah, yeah, the colors in the moss look pretty cool. I don't want to drop a single one. There's a nice color on that one. I'm loving this already. The variety is just fantastic. Like I was saying, the, the whole resemblance to jelly beans is it's kind of fun. I really like it. So I'm going to try to carefully tease through this moss a little bit and put it down bit by bit without putting down any isopods so that we can get a look at them. Hmm? It's, it's difficult when you're unboxing, as you know, uh, to film with one hand and watching unboxings makes me want more pods. Understandable. Totally understandable. Uh, this moss is going to make some nice snacks later. There's a little one. Can I have to kind of set that one down. I can't really do anything about it. But I just, if I can dig through this a little bit, we can get some of the isopods to show. There's a nice looking one right there. There, ooh, look at that one. What color is that one? That looks like maybe it's a magic potion there. Look at that. So fun. Oh, this one crowing on me looks really cool. It has like a skirt. That's a different color from the rest of its body, which is fantastic. I love that. It almost reminds me of red tiger. Of course, it's not the same genus. It's armadillidium, but... It's got a similar visual effect. There's some fun ones in there too. And fun, oh, they're just everywhere. Okay, I'm just gonna put this down so that I can try to get the camera where I want it. Let's see. Look at all these guys. Beautiful. Can I focus on that? Yeah. There are some really fantastic colors in there. And there are 30 of them, so that'll keep me going. Um, I'll be interested in seeing how that develops. Checking, make sure I'm not leaving any little ones in there. And then once again, I'm putting this in here so that I don't lose my, uh, don't forget what I put in there and so I can label the outside. In fact, I'll probably just peel that label off and stick it on this container. And what do you strive for when breeding? Well, Mickey, M, that is a good um, question. I think for me, it's it's about getting as as much variety as possible. I I look forward to looking in this bin in the future when uh, you know there are like. 200 in here and seeing just looks like a bag of jelly beans honestly that's that's what i'm looking forward to as much variety as possible oh okay here's another one so armadillidium vulgare t negative albino so the there are two generally recognized albinos in the species t negative t positive tyrosinase is the enzyme that is being referred to with the t and the tyrosinase negative means that they have paler colors. Tyrosinase positive has a, has a darker color to it, especially as they develop. There's kind of a caramely sort of color that develops over time. And I don't know how that enzyme interacts with the melanin and all that stuff, but it's cool. So, sorry, just trying to get this tape off and let you see what's going on at the same time. So, 
like I said, I think I'm going to keep these labels. Uh, ooh, look at that. Those are pretty gorgeous. You know, in a lot of animals, I'm, I'm not actually a fan of albinos, but it works for these guys. Totally does. Totally does. That's awesome. Oh, we got a donation. Oh, from the Tarantula Collective. That's awesome. Sent us a sticker. That might be... That might be like the first or second sticker I've ever gotten, which is super cool. So, thanks again, Richard. Okay, just a second. Getting the, getting the bin ready. Put these guys in. Ooh. Takes a second here. There we go. Yeah, it is like early Christmas, that's true. Need to see these under black light. I do have black light, so um, I need to try that, see how it goes. Yeah, so Heather, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try a black light and see what we get. Oh, I just, what am I doing? Don't want to mix these. This is the wrong bin. I've already put something in this bin. This is why I label them, you know? Um, here, this one should be empty. Oh, don't want to lose you guys. They're starting to crawl out. This is a nice, healthy colony for sure. Did I just put that down? Sorry, guys. Too many bins surrounding me. I'm confused by all the bins. Let's do this one. Okay, nothing in here. All right. So another look at these gorgeous isopods close up. Wow. So cool. Notice I'm using magnolia leaves for the... Uh, hides in here because I'm out of cork bark. I need to make a big order, bulk order of cork bark. I haven't, uh, haven't ordered cork bark in a good while, so I need to. Let's, let's take a good, good close-up look on these guys. See if I can focus. I really do like that color. And it's a nice big group. So, do you have any tips for breeding blue death vanier beetles? Haven't been able to get any eggs yet, moth meats. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, I can help you out with that. Um, one thing you need to do is make sure you have deep enough substrate and a large enough um, enclosure that you can, get a, you can get a moisture gradient in the substrate. So keep one side like bone dry and then keep another side kind of slightly moist. And that should... Uh, help them start to lay eggs more in the moist side. That's ten, they'll tend to gravitate towards that moist side to lay the eggs. And that should help a lot. Uh, also make sure you have some organic material in that side of the substrate. That will help too. So, um, ooh, wow, this is cool. Okay, and hopefully that help, that helps. Oh, and I just got a message from Alan saying that I did pronounce his last name right. Awesome. Okay. That's very cool. All right. And you could throw some albinos in the gem mix at some point, though. That's true. And I think there might be some in there. But, you know, Mickey M, I think I may have T plus albinos, too, because um, I think some showed up in my orange vigor colony. I've started isolating them. So, here we go. These... Armadillidium vulgari magic potion orange dalmatian. So they're like a cross between magic potion and orange vigor, maybe? That sounds cool. Yeah, someone's working on the uh, the smooth death fanning beetles. I know someone who's, I can't remember who I talked to about it. He, I think he, he got some larvae. And. I don't know if you got any to pupate yet, but at least it's on the way. They do come from a different environment. They're more dune specialized than, than uh, the blue death fanning beetles are more rocky areas. And the smooth ones are more from the, the dunes, sandy dunes. So, okay, let's see what we got. 
Oh, you've kept the sea slaters. That is really cool. Oh, I think breeding Adrotes would be really cool. Oh, Jose, thank you. So do these guys get... Let's look at their spots. Let's check it out. So Heather was saying maybe they have black and orange spots. Whoa, look at that. That is so cool looking. Love this moss, by the way, too. Oh, that one looked like he had some dark spots, maybe. That one did. That one has dark spots. See on the end of the peri on there. Whoa. Look at these guys. That's pretty fantastic. So it looks like you were right. Um, Heather, that seems to be what's going on. That is so cool. Oh, hello, Newt. Nice to see you here. Looking at some orange Dalmatian magic potions. That is a really cool effect. Love that. Wow, those are pretty fantastic. Let me see if... Um, I'm going to put them down in here. And we'll, I'm going to watch them. I'm going to take this off of the... Uh, So they're orange Dalmatian magic potions. I'm not even sure if I knew these existed. It's pretty awesome. Let's get a close up look at these guys. Wow. I'm going to pull some closer. You look at that. The, the yellow or the green color on there is fantastic. So fun. I think the light is kind of washing them out a little bit when I get too close. Oh no, Heather, really? An orange one and then he ate it? <laughs> so sad. Chromo Paleo Show. Yes, they do look a lot like trilobites. And they're fantastic. The Ligias or Ligia, however you say it, are so cool in that they're so aware of people. They just, they're very, uh, they'll see you and know you're coming and like try to run away and stuff from far away. And they're fast too. I've seen them in Florida. Hmm. Wow, this is fun. Just just staring at them. I could I could get lost staring at all these new isopods. So should we, we check on each one? So we got Armadillium vulgari Magic Potion Orange Dalmatian. This is again from the isopod farm. And I'm gonna leave that in here for now so I don't get confused about what's what. Put the lid on. Putting this down. Okay. Now, this one is Armadillium vulgare negative, T negative albino. Very cool. Different effect from the magic potions, as you notice. The magic potions have kind of a pearlescent white body, and these have more of a, a yellow color to them. Very pretty, both of them. Got a nice colony of those. Just will have a nice colony of those. They're off to a great start. In good numbers. These are the the whiteout nazatum. Let's see if we can spot a couple of these. There's a couple. So these are armadillidium nazatum whiteout. No pigment at all. The coloration you see there is from the inside of their body. Uh, it's not their pigment. It's something they ate. You know. So that's cool. 
Oh, look, we got a super chat. Another super chat from J-Man. Thank you. That is awesome. Really appreciate the super chats and stickers today. Oh. <laughs> I don't like to sneeze while I'm wearing a microphone. That's one of the things I really try not to do, but there's not all, you know, can't always help it. And then here, let's look at another box. So Theropod Hunter, you're going to try to get some Legia Oceanica, but Androniscus Dentingers. Oh, that's, those are cool, too. Um, mix Whiteout and Peach and make Nazatum Koi, maybe. So here's the gem mix. This is Armadillion Vulgari gem mix. Um, one I've been looking forward to for a long time. Just full of lots of different colors. That's the idea there. And look at the different colors. I mean, I've never seen one look like this. So I'm not sure if that's Santa Lucia or what that is originally. So, uh, thank you, J-Man. Are the albino forms more sensitive to light? That is a good question. I think it was Heather who was saying that... Um, did you say that they, the uh, magic potions, this appears to be a magic potion in the gem mix, seem to be uh, more curious? And she isolated some magic potions from her gem mix and uh, got them breeding that way. So, yeah, these are so cool. These are the gem mix. And then also got some more orange vigors. He sent some more orange vigors. I have, you can see some of these are actually kind of yellow. But I really like the orange vigors, and they come in a lot of variety. You get some that are almost wild types, like that one on the right. But then you get a wide variety of orange and into the yellow coloration. So, oh, the burgundy ones can get really vivid coppery flecks. I bet. Uh, I look forward to seeing that. So, I'm interested to see the magic potions when they get to a big population, because, you know, isopods always act different when there's a whole bunch of them together. See how uh, unshy they are. Looking forward to that. So Clockwork Willow, trying to start a wild-caught Oniscus Ocellus colony. Any tips for breeding them? Um, so Oniscus need to get fairly big before they start breeding. They usually won't, you know, a lot of isopod species will breed at a very small size. Oniscus generally will not breed until they're a little larger. Uh, they like very, um, they don't need a lot of ventilation. Just a little is okay. Uh, they need fairly cool and moist conditions. They really don't do well when it gets too warm. So, hopefully that helps. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Snailiontologist. What do I think of snails? I've actually kept and bred a number of different snails, and I like snails a lot. Unfortunately, I would get more into snails, uh, but in my state, there's, there are really tight restrictions against getting snails sent in. There are snails that I can get. I've bred mystery snails. I've had ram's horns. I have assassin snails and pond snails and different kinds of snails. Um, some saltwater snails too I've kept. And uh, Malaysian trumpet snails. I have some uh, brackish acclimated ones that live with my brackish shrimp. So I do keep quite a few snails. So Frankenstein mixes of morphs, Heather. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like it. Yes, the antennae movements and flagellum. Flagellum is the tip of the antenna. For those of you who weren't sure what that is. And uh, the movements are really cool. You know, you can actually tell different types of isopods apart sometimes just by the articulation points on the flagellum, which is kind of fun. And these, looks like most of the uh, Montenegros have retreated from the paper towel. And I'm sure some of those babies have ended up under here with my adults. Let's get a good look at these guys because, I mean, Really, it's hard to beat these clowns. I mean, they are gorgeous, right? I can see some babies, some of those babies probably from, from Alan in there. Giant African snails, I loved those in Hawaii. They were fun. Couldn't bring any home, obviously, but... What is so mysterious about mystery snails? Nobody knows. Oh, yeah. The Lygia palisi, the, the really pancake ones. 
I've heard that they don't do well in warm temperatures, but they're super cool looking. They look like they're made of metal. Yeah, some of them totally do. Punta Cana's look like that too. Oh, awesome, Heather. You're going to trade Toilet Peach for or Orange Werner. They're really cool. So, yep, Dave, these are clown isopods. I just kind of made them all mad by moving them. I'm going to put their, ro their uh, cork bark back. We can see if we can get a good look at them real close up. Love these guys. My favorite, one of my favorite species. Um, just so gorgeous. Has anybody seen the purple pudding morph of Armadillidium klugai Montenegro? I have not seen it yet. How do I get my teeny oak leaf figs so full? Um, I think it, good question. I think it's partly they get good fertilization by, with all the gecko poop. It's part of it. And Lars, Porcelli or not as yellow is so cool. Mine just started reproducing, just barely. So thank you again, J-Man, for those. Um, I am so excited that they're breeding. And Heather, yeah, I see what you mean. They totally do look like that. I've heard they're harder to breed, but I'm not sure. And, oh, J-Man's red phase are doing well too. The fact that they love to explore, isn't that cool? When you got isopods that are bold, love that. I don't have any of my red phase right here. They're all upstairs and I'm filming downstairs, so can't really get them easily. But uh, I'll make sure to, to feature them on a, an upcoming stream. I want to check Patreon because I checked right before the stream to see if anybody had any questions on Patreon. I didn't see any, but I'm just uh, double checking to see if there are any. Oh, we got some questions. Nope, that's an old one. Never mind. Um, I clicked on the wrong stream. Okay. Nope, no questions. That's fine. I got plenty of questions in the, in the stream, so it's all good. But Patreon... Patreon has been amazing. I really appreciate all the uh, assistance on Patreon as well as the Super Chats. It really helps. Uh, I wish I could tell you all how much it helps. Oh, Helix Aspersa or Cornu Aspersa. I've kept that species. They're fun. You can catch them here. They're, they're adventive. They're introduced here. And I haven't seen that with giant isopods. I haven't seen that movie so or show or whatever it is. And Clockwork Willow. Excellent. Well, thank you for your support. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate it. Everybody who uh, has been on Patreon, I've had some people increase their pledges and things, and it's just amazing. I'm overwhelmed by the support, and I hope I can give back to the community. Um, I want to want to help out as much as I can. So really excited about that. Um, excited about what's coming up. We're, we've got some good things coming. Some collaborations coming. Next week's uh, live stream is going to be a collaboration. So um, if you're interested in snakes, we've got a, a snake keeper coming on to do some Q&A next week. So um, yeah, definitely come check that out. And then uh, next week I'm also doing some filming. That's kind of a secret, but uh, that'll be fun when you find out about that too. So, so Heather Jensen... Terrestrial snails in with your Cuban tree frogs. Cool. I have some tiny snails in with one of my crested geckos as part of the cleanup crew, and they seem to do well, and they stay tiny. So, Crapper and Cummings. Isopod themed tank would work if they get in enough numbers? Certainly. Especially with something like dairy cows or powders, like powder, maybe a powder party mix. Uh, totally works. Um, uh, you can do that because they're day active. L dairy cows, milk backs would work. I'm even thinking a Porcelio Levis mixed morph tank could work and you'd have a lot of colors. Or just California mix because California mix has a lot of colors in it already. Uh, you could totally do that. Um, zebra isopods are fairly day active too. So that would be another option. Aren't isopods cute? They are. I'm just sitting and staring at them. I'm going to switch these guys over one more time. Um, not to irritate them, but you can... See how some of them have the yellow spots and some of them have just the white spots and the babies haven't really developed as much yet. And Joseph Tavares, welcome. 
dairy cows with California mix. So I'm really interested to see what would happen if you put dairy cows, California mix, milk backs, and uh, let's see the other one I'm thinking, orange together. I'm, I'm curious. I might try it sometime. Not in my main stocks, of course, but if I might set up a bin and try that. Ooh, this one has a lot of really big white markings on it. Check it out. They're like bigger than everybody else's. Pink-footed millipedes. I don't have any of that species. I do have several species of millipede. I have Hiltonius pulcheris. I have or Orthoporus. I have um, bumblebees, and I have Spirostreptus species one, and some Narcissus americanus and stuff, but yep, none of those. Okay, one more time checking on these guys. The orange vigors. Should probably wrap this up soon. But, oh, flaming millipedes are one of my favorites. Um, and uh, ivory millipedes are one of my favorites. Oh, and Heather, I, I hear you. I hear you. The moving with as many critters as we have is insane. I hate it. And the worst thing is moving aquariums. The, the moving is bad with creatures at all, with pets, but moving aquariums is the worst. Huh, Heather, you only have females of the ivories, huh? So no saddled males, huh? Money spiders. I'm not sure which one the money spiders are. Okay, well, thank you, J-Man. I really appreciate you being here and all the help that you give, all the support you give the channel. It's amazing. So thank you so much for joining in. And yeah, yeah, I do have some millipedes. Don't have any on the live stream today, but I do have some and we'll do some again in the future on the live stream. So Heather, yeah, with 300 plants, I can see that. I don't have 300, but I have quite a few plants, not as many as you. Um, so yeah, I, money spiders must be a term that I'm not familiar with because I do get spiders in my bins occasionally. I get uh, the false black widow, the steatoidea, if that's how you call it. Um, I get those in my bins, but I'm not sure what a money spider is actually. Starter isopods, um, moth meats, zebra isopods are a fantastic starter. Armadillidium vulgare, which we're looking at right now, you know, there are a lot of morphs of that one, is a fantastic starter. I actually made a video about this recently. You can check out five starter species for beginners, or, you know, that's not what it's called, but it's something like that. Um, powders, so powder blues, powder oranges, powder whites, whiteouts, they call them. That's a good species. Dairy cows is a great species. Uh, well, it's a morph of Corsella lavis, which is a good species for beginners. Okay, so teeny little spiders, big fat abdomens, linifidae. I'll have to check it out. And rochant. Ah, oh, yeah. If if they're not causing a problem, then might as well keep them. Thanks, Newt. Thanks for joining in. Really appreciate it. Good to see you here. All right, everybody. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for joining. Thank you again to Alan and to Isopod Farm for sending these fantastic isopods. Really excited to be working with all of these. Uh, so take care, and I'll see you on Friday.